Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Suzanne Johnson, and uh, with my partner in local history, David Clemens, I had the pleasure of working on a book project about Camp Upton, and this is just the, for us, the culminating event of uh, a very important time in our local history. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today as we mark this wilderness area, which for, for a short time, more than 100 years ago, became a soldier city. In April 1917, when President Wilson declared war on Germany, a massive effort was needed to raise and train an army to join the beleaguered Allied powers in France. As Dave has said many times this past year, the Germans weren't worried and thought we'd never get there. They were wrong. By June, this scrubby pine and oak forest was chosen as one of 16 cantonments, temporary camps, for its large acreage controlled by a few landowners, including heirs of Longwood's William Sidney Smith, proximity to three railroad stations at Wading River, Manorville, and Yapank, and its easy access to the departure port, ports of New York, where troops would sail to Europe. Incredibly, in six months' time, over 1,000 buildings were constructed with barracks to house 40,000 men. The 77th Division was formed here with recruits mainly from the metropolitan area, eventually earning the nickname the Statue of Liberty Division. The trenches they dug and trained in are still evident on the Brookhaven Lab property behind us. The first troops left here in April 1918 and made a significant difference in the Argonne Forest and other campaigns. Their regimental histories make fascinating reading. Fortunately, the war ended quickly in November 1918 and the camp then took on demobilizing troops. Many of those who came through later settled on Long Island. But by 1921, it was no longer in use and abandoned. So a week-long auction on was held and all of it was torn down and removed. Yet only 20 years later, it was rebuilt as another war loomed. Remnants of those buildings crop up all over Long Island near 100 year, nearly 100 years later. Today is the 101st anniversary of the official opening of the camp. Since April 2017, there have been exhibits, publications, lectures, and even a recreation of Irving Berlin's Yip Yip Yap Hank written right here and performed by students at Longwood High School. It is our goal that Camp Upton's history will continue to be studied and honor given to those who spent time here. We would like to thank Barbara Russell, Brookhaven Town historian, and Melanie Cardone Leathers of Longwood Public Library for assisting in the grant application for this sign. Tim Green, Cultural Resources Manager at Brookhaven National Lab, and Paul and Franco and the wonderful Longwood's Journey website are instrumental in continuing to tell the story of Camp Upton. We are grateful also to the volunteers of the Long Island Living History Association, these gentlemen, for joining us here today. And now I'd like to introduce Gail Bailey, my other partner on this project. Thank you, Suzanne. Thanks, Suzanne. It's certainly a pleasure to be here this morning, everybody. Um, and just to add to her remarks before I read a letter from the Pomeroy Foundation, uh, it's the location of this sign we feel is important because a lot of school children will pass it and be able to read it from their school buses, their parents will be passing by, and in so doing, the legacy of keeping local history alive for generations to come will be fulfilled. So that's another important aspect. We're so happy that the town of Brookhaven agreed to host this sign for us. Um, I do have a letter from the Pomeroy Foundation on behalf of the William G. Pomeroy Foundation. We wish you well as you gather to commemorate Camp Upton and the important role it had as a military training site. We are proud to provide support for your good work to pay tribute to its history, and we wish we could be with you to celebrate. 
We would like to extend our thanks to the Longwood Society for Historic Preservation for your great work preserving this history. We'd also like to thank Suzanne Johnson, yay, as well as those who have had a hand in bringing this marker here to this site, which has been Brookhaven National Laboratory since 1947. Together, you have all done a wonderful job. The Pomeroy Foundation, one of its main object initiatives is helping people celebrate the community's history. And since 2005, when Bill Pomeroy established the foundation, they funded about 700 markers and plaques across our, their signage grant programs. The foundation believes that these markers serve to educate the public, encourage pride of place, and help to promote historic tourism, which can economically benefit the communities in which they are placed. In addition to our traditional historic markers, there's also a program focused on commemorating the National Register of Historic Places. And I see our friend Bob Kessler from the Ipec Historic Society knows, very, knows a lot about that. Here in Suffolk County, Paula Miller concludes with, in her letter, your good work to commemorate Camp Upton is part of that continued work to celebrate this important history. And it's our hope that the historic marker you see today will stand as a testament, not only for those of us who can enjoy it now, but also for future generations. Congratulate on your new marker. Warmest regards, Paula Miller, who is the di executive director of the William G. Pomeroy Foundation. So thank you, Pomeroy Foundation. Right. Without you, we wouldn't have this beautiful sign. Uh, I know we have our our elected officials joining us who also love local history and it's my privilege and honor to introduce my friend and yours our state senator Ken Laval. Senator Laval. Thank you Carol. Um, I started my uh, career as a uh, history teacher at the Jonas Salk Junior High School in Levittown and um, history is so important and that's why I enjoy Gail so much, because she makes sure, I wasn't quite sure what we were doing this morning. I said, what is Gail up to? But it's wonderful that we have people, as she said, this sign, students will be on their school bus reading the sign. So, uh, Camp Upton has a rich history, and I kind of tangentially got to enjoy a part of it because I spent my summers and weekends in a place called Corum, not far from here. And so, um, We have so much history around us, starting from the very beginning to uh, today. And it's important that we have local people who make sure that we are embracing our history because it is important to us. So, Gail, it's great to join you once again. And uh, Mike, <laughs> Mike, take the mic. Thank you, Senator, and, Mike and, his mic. and thank you everyone for being out here uh, early this morning on this not so chilly winter day, or actually last day of fall. Uh, you know, we are so fortunate to live in such a historical, historically rich community that includes Camp Upton that dates back so far and has a reach, literally across the ocean into Europe and Asia. Um, you know, as the former president of the Longwood School Board, it really gives me great pleasure to understand the educational value that this will bring to our students and other visiting students from across Long Island and hopefully even further than that. But as your town councilman in this area, and actually share it with Dan Panico, I want to say thank you to Suzanne and Bob, um, Gail, and also Barbara Russell, our town historian, and the Parks Department, and also uh, my brothers in the Rich Fire Department who are keeping us safe today. Thank so you. thank you, and on behalf of the town, Merry Christmas, and a happy and healthy and safe New Year. God bless everyone. Thank you. And now we will have the unveiling performed by our marvelous soldiers in their wonderful uniforms. 